there, I'm Debbie Jones and a very warm welcome to TV Cruise Channel's Guide to Repositioning Cruises. Sounds a bit mysterious, doesn't it? Well, in this program, we're going to be delving into what's still quite a mystery for many holiday makers, myself included, actually. Repositioning cruises is perhaps a term you're not too familiar with. So here to explain it all is the cruise industry expert, Andy Harmer from the Cruise Lines International Association. Andy, great to be with you today. Thanks very much indeed uh, for coming in. Now, it does sound a bit of a black art. What exactly exactly is a repositioning cruise. It does sound a bit mysterious, doesn't it? Yeah, it's hard to say as well. <laughs> <laughs> so a repositioning cruise uh, is where cruise lines uh, will relocate their ships from the sunny weather, for example, of the Caribbean and bring them over to the sunny weather of the Mediterranean in the summer. So, right. so the Mediterranean isn't hot all year round. It isn't what uh, a lot of uh, holiday makers would enjoy year round so they move their ships back to the Caribbean for our winter and then back to the Mediterranean again for the summer so the repositioning bit yes. is a bit that takes them from Europe across to the Caribbean for example. Okay and what cruise lines actually offer these repositioning cruises? So most of them will do certainly those that offer Caribbean cruising or cruising that they really uh, rely on hot sunny weather so mm. so the majority of them will have ships in Europe for the summer and then the majority of them will relocate them somewhere in the world uh, in our winter now that could be the Caribbean but it also could be uh, the Middle East for example or Asia or even down to Australasia. Right so they can go a long way. Yeah absolutely yeah. and this is a great these are great opportunities for people to see some great places uh, as they're leaving and as they're arriving and mm. really to experience life at sea. Right and I'm imagining that most cruise companies they don't actually bill them as a repositioning cruise. How are they dressed up? What are they called? Well, have a look in, in the brochure and it will describe them in various ways. But right. most of them it's described as a long voyage or mm. an opportunity for a fly cruise. In other words, it will take you one way, but the ship won't bring you back the other, yes. as many, most cruisers will. So yeah. the fly bit is either that you fly out to the Caribbean and cruise back or that you cruise out to the Caribbean, for example, and fly back. OK. So half of that journey will be uh, by aeroplane to take you back. Mm. But the great thing is, of course, if it's sa sailing from Europe, you can jump on the ship in Europe, you can then cruise across and then you can extend your stay. So if you love the Caribbean or you want to experience New York or you want to see some of the other places where the ship ends, then this is a great way to get there. And, and I have to beg the question here, What's the advantage, apart from the obvious ones you've just mentioned, is there a financial incentive? Are they good value for money? They're great value for uh -huh. money, uh, which is always important, of course. Yeah. But also, a lot of people love those repositioning cruises. It's a lot longer at sea, so you're not stopping every day at port, which some yes. people don't particularly mm. uh, want to experience on a cruise. It's a great way to get to know your fellow travellers. It's a very sociable cruise mm. because everyone is on board for the duration of that longer voyage. Uh, it's a great way to get to know the crew, for example, but also it's a great way to sit back and relax and know that you're going to be looked after and entertained mm. and wined and dined for the duration of the cruise without any worries at all. So, yes. so many people like that ability to sit back and relax. Yes, and I suppose it's a great way of combating jet lag, depending on where you're going and yes, coming exactly. from. Yes, exactly. Because it's a slower uh, journey, of course, than it is to fly, then you get used, your body adjusts to the time differences yes. either as you're crossing the Atlantic or as you're taking some of those longer voyages mm. and I love the idea I mean I it's ridiculous me being in this business I've only ever been on two cruises and one of them um, I loved it so much on board that when we got into the port of call I just stayed on the ship fab all the food everything still there <laughs> it was just wonderful because I yeah. truly did just relaxed and I loved what was going on on the ship so much and when people go out to a port uh, there's still all the food there's the drink there's some entertainment but when you're actually at sea for uh, many days at a time mm. It's all day, isn't it? The food, the drink, the entertainment, yeah. it never stops, does it? It doesn't. And what's really nice, I said before, it's a very sociable uh, way to take a holiday. So, you know, you really do get to know your fellow guests uh, if you want to. Or, yes. you, of course, you can shut yourself away and you can take a couple of books with you. Oh, lovely. And relax. And, uh, you know, that, uh, that ability to really 
uh, connect with the sea, I guess. You know, cruising, we forget cruising is all about that trip across the ocean yes. for many people. Now, mm. of course, lots of people want to visit lots of different ports of call and see lots of different places. Mm. Well, if that's what you like to do on holiday, then a repositioning cruise probably isn't for mm. you. But it's a great offer. It's a great alternative for people like me that I want to be on a cruise ship to be on the ship and to see the sea and to get up in the morning early exactly. sometimes, have a run round the deck, only joking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you had me worry then for a moment. But you know, one of the great things uh, that people love to do is if, for example, you can fly to New York, you can then shop till you drop in New York, which is a great thing to do in mm. itself. And then you can put all of that luggage onto the ship and the ship will bring you back to the United Kingdom <gasps> or to Europe. I thought of that. What a great idea. So you fly to New York. Yes. You can even get there a bit earlier. It's Take a, a few days. days. Few days. Absolutely. What a brilliant idea. And then, of course, there's no jet lag as you sail back because the ship takes longer and therefore your body mm. adjusts naturally. It is a great way uh, to spend some time, as I say, in these places where the ship sails from. Yeah. If... Uh, uh, alternatively, you love the Caribbean or you love the sand or you love Florida for the attractions and the theme parks and everything like that, then fly out there, spend a couple of days, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the beaches, jump onto the ship and then let the ship take the strain and oh, bring you back. I'm grinning like a Cheshire cat here <laughs> because to me that sounds brilliant, especially going to New York and spending you, I knew you the know, shopping would get store, you yeah get all the shopping <laughs> in and of course there's no weight limit really unless you buy a car <laughs> well yeah try not to buy a car but no absolutely so all of those issues that you have with if you were to fly flight. back yeah, you don't have to worry about it on a cruise. You can fill the taxi with all of your bags and shopping gifts and everything. Jump onto the cruise ship. And as I say, you can let the ship take the strain. It'll entertain you and feed you and wine and dine you. Oh. You get to know your fellow guests and the crew. You can really relax yes. uh, as it brings you back into home. Oh, I can. Now, ladies, I can see our ladies already. You want him to go, aren't you? You want him to go, you want Macy's, all these different places. <laughs> and also the Caribbean, you know, when you buy those coconuts and they're all painted. I came back from Belize one time Fantastic. with uh, 12 big coconuts in a black bin liner and the plane wasn't going to let me on. You know, it was I'm not surprised. Friends. And, and <laughs> do you know what? I just cried and, they, and they, they did let me on, but it was a long, long time ago. You wouldn't get that now. You wouldn't. We would check your coconuts I was these days. Say, <laughs> I bet you would have. <laughs> anyway, what time of the year do repositioning cruises tend to happen? Yeah, that's a great question. So most of the med if you think most of the Mediterranean cruising takes place between kind of May and September, so a lot of ships will reposition from the Caribbean uh, in springtime and then will sail back to the Caribbean mm. uh, at uh, early autumn, that kind of time. Right. And is it very popular with us Brits or is it predominantly people elsewhere in the world? It's a real mixture. So it does depend on the cruise line and the cruise ship that you choose. So sometimes uh, it'll be a very British makeup of guests on board. So check with the cruise line or yes. your travel agent uh, who will be on board but it, it can be a mix it's a great way of course mm. for for people from north america and the caribbean to come across to europe and similarly it's a great way for europeans then of including course. the brits to then head across there yeah. i know it's a bit how long is a piece of string but what is the average length of a repositioning cruise yes it does vary and it varies a lot by the ship involved as well as the cruise line and the itinerary but it's about 10 to 11 days on board so then if you then extend that stay uh, once you arrive in your destination by three or four days and you can make that into a two week or even a slightly longer holiday right so you could really say that some of these these cruises they're a little bit like a mini world holiday because you know you can fly out to somewhere and go somewhere near or whatever and then get back get on the cruise i think it's do you know that's really caught my imagination no it's fantastic and you're right a lot of people see a world cruise as something they can't do yeah. either because they can't take all of that time out of work or because uh, that's not the kind of thing that they'd like to do for two or three months so this is almost like experiencing a world cruise it's like a segment of a world cruise yes. where you can really relax and let the ship do the work. Oh, well, I think it sounds absolutely terrific because until I sat in the studio and had a chat with you, I didn't realise that these were such 
brilliant value for money and that you could sit on these wonderful wonderful cruise ships and relax on your way home I think I'd like to fly out and then cruise back rather than cruise out and fly back I just I just love the idea of the shopping as well yeah certainly it works that way but of course if it's sailing out of uh, Europe across uh, the Atlantic then a lot of people like to will jump on the ship here and then experience the destination when they get there mm. so I guess it depends which way which direction you want to cruise absolutely it sounds brilliant well listen do stay with us because we'll be back uh, chatting with Andy in just a few more minutes with some more fantastic facts about these wonderful repositioning cruises Hello there, I'm Debbie Jones. Welcome back to TV Cruise Channel's Guide to Repositioning Cruises. Now we've got the lovely Andy Harmer from the Cruise Lines International Association. He's still with me. I love him because he talked about shopping, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone that's just joined us, a very quick recap on what a repositioning cruise is. So it's generally where a cruise ship will go from one cruising area to another cruising area. So it's a longer voyage. Uh, you don't really stop at ports of call. Right. And uh, you, which means so you get plenty of time on board to relax and enjoy and let the ship do the work. And often, so the most popular one, I guess, is ones that take you from Europe to the Caribbean and they do that sort of uh, autumn time. Mm -hmm. And then the other direction from the Caribbean to the Mediterranean, well, they tend to do in spring. OK. And they can be quite a, a, a lot better value than others. Yeah, because there's less involved in terms of stopping at ports of call and of all of those kinds of things. And they are generally a great uh, value way uh, to to enjoy the cruise experience. OK, and now just remind us of some of the most popular repositioning itineraries. So, so I've mentioned one already, which is Mediterranean yep. and Caribbean and then back the other side. Mm -hmm. We've also mentioned that opportunity for shopping. So from New York across yeah. to Europe as um, well. Okay. But there are plenty of yeah. other destinations, as mm. you say. Just again, to recap, you don't sacrifice anything by going on a repositioning cruise on board the ship. Everything is the same. Absolutely. So the food and the entertainment and the activities and everything that the cruise ship does every day of every sailing of every year uh, that it travels, it includes all of those things. Absolutely. Mm. Because, you know, we want our guests to come back. OK. And what about rooms what are the best rooms to to choose i mean you've got state rooms you've got balcony rooms what's the score with uh, all of that well a lot of people who take a repositioning cruise like to do so because of those days at sea where they can where the sea is laid out in front oh. of them and they can really relax so for that reason a lot of people choose to take a balcony because they can sit on their balcony in their private space yes. with a cup of tea or something stronger and really take in the view of that my ocean. type of man Andy, you know <laughs> Shopping and something stronger, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then Alaska is, of course, another destination where you can start and end your repositioning cruise from the Caribbean. But also a lot of cruise ships will reposition from the west coast of America down to uh, Hawaii, for example, and then further south still down to Sydney and Australasia. Now, that's a great repositioning cruise. A lot of people would love to discover, for example, Hawaii and those beautiful islands, those beautiful volcanic islands. Again, tremendous scenery great yes. shopping great food great beaches of course some very famous beaches there mm. and then jump on a cruise ship and then sail down to Austra towards Australasia and, mm. and, and they vary in length as to where they go to but a great way to enjoy that part of the world okay uh, to me it sounds like it would be a good idea to go on a really big all singing all dancing ship you know something with I mean all the ships I say all the ships the two that I've been on I've done I've done pieces from some other ships as well but actually having a cruise as a holiday for myself um, the entertainment is always West End class isn't it? Yeah it's fantastic and you can enjoy a different show every night and you can really uh, you know, settle back into a, a, a theatre, a proper theatre, and really enjoy these stage performances. So, yes, a lot of people do enjoy a repositioning cruise on a larger ship because mm. there's a lot more going on and they can enjoy a lot more activities and choice in terms of uh, dining places as well as mm. entertainment. But a lot of people also choose some of the smaller ships for repositioning because of that more intimate 
atmosphere. It's a yeah. m- many people find it easier to make friends with other uh, guests on board if it's a smaller ship. If it's ship. a bit smaller, yes, yeah. because it, a lot of ships they're like living in a village or in a mini city. So it, you know the smaller ones can be better. Yeah. W- what about children's facilities? Because it sounds to me like it, because your children there is normally stuff going on for them. Um, it is particularly relaxing as a parent to go on a cruise. Yeah, it can be. And it is worth checking with the cruise line what kids' facilities, what children's facilities will be open and available during a repositioning cruise because they tend to be in term time. So a lot of them uh, won't repositioning during school holidays. So they may scale back some of the kids' facilities and activities on board. So it is worth checking at time Mm. of booking or in time you're inquiring. But some of them will possibly have children's facilities for preschool children, you know, the nursery or whatever. Absolutely, all the way up to 18. So And what they do is they have different clubs for different age groups Group so that they really tailor the activities and entertainment that they provide to those yes. children based on their age. So yeah. it's also a nice way for the kids to get to know other kids of that oh, same yes. age. Make new best friends. Exactly. I remember we took when we took our daughter, we took my mum, my mum, my husband, myself and my daughter, and she actually had such a good time. She was 11, I think, and she actually cried on the way home, she cried when we, we came down the, the, the gangplank and I said, what's the matter, Ruth? She went, nothing. And she had had Absolutely. such a storming time. Yeah, and I think if the children have a great holiday, then so do the parents because they oh, know gosh, they're being yes. well looked after, well entertained. They're making great friends daytime and in the evening. Uh, many of them, of course, have babysitting facilities as well yes. and, will, and actually will take the children to the dining facility so that the parents can have a romantic meal maybe during oh the oh, cruise great. as well so so yes if the children are entertained and happy then generally the parents are that, too that is absolutely so bang on you're right <laughs> <laughs> i remember thinking oh what's going to happen here but it was absolutely because the first one we went on she was only under two but it was brilliant yeah absolutely. I, I imagine it would be quite good for solo passengers as well yeah i think because it's a much more sociable uh, holiday to be on the ship with uh, all, all of those other guests and like-minded people as well so if it's people who like shopping for example in New York yeah. and I keep coming back to that but if people like shopping in New York they'd, you know you tend to want to have a holiday with like-minded people so great for solo travellers it's a very sociable atmosphere and of course you because the ship doesn't call in any ports of call along the way uh, or generally doesn't then it, you know it's, it makes it much easier for people to make friends yeah. and it would be I would imagine quite a, a new and different way of cruising for seasoned cruisers who are used to getting off you know every two days it's a bit of a different one for them isn't it it is it is a very different type of cruise because most people expect on a normal cruise holiday that during a week it will stop at maybe five ports of call so a yes. great way for them to get yeah. to get off and explore some of all and, and all of those different destinations but you're right it's a completely different type of cruise because you jump on at the beginning and generally it may make one or two stops on the way, but generally for the for the duration of that cruise, yeah. uh, you won't be stopping in a port of call. OK. And just to cover off some of the cruise essentials, do you still need your passport or visa or whatever? Absolutely. Yeah, mm. normal travel uh, documentation is required. Absolutely. Right. And what about luggage restrictions? Well, it really depends how you're going to get there or get back. So... Of course, half of that journey is based on the cruise ship where you don't have any luggage re- restrictions. But if you're then flying back, then you need to check with the airline as to how much luggage you can take on that flight. Right. And when you go on cruises, I mean, obviously you do, you go cruising. Which one would appeal to you? <laughs> I love them all, of course, because Just they're like all fantastic. <laughs> I love you all. I love them all. I think it depends on the type of holiday that you're looking for, and I think that does vary. So if it's something where you're with a big group of people and you want to have a great fun holiday and you want to get up to loads of different activities and entertainment then I love the bigger ships but yes. but if you want something a bit more intimate or one that explores some of those smaller ports of call then I love the smaller ships as well oh, so okay. it does vary and if a ship was repositioning say from here from the UK hmm. or Europe over to the States or somewhere really far flung will it do the same back the other way the following year. Is that the way it works? Yes, so it it does the journey once uh, a year. So it'll come out to to Europe in the spring and then it'll go back 
uh, in the autumn and then it will generally come back about the same time again in spring. Mm -hmm. And normally would your travel agent or whoever's handling this for you, if you said I'd like to stay in a hotel for a couple of days or whatever, do they handle that bit for you? Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's always worth, I think it's always worth spending a couple of days in the place where you're flying to and starting yes. the ship from because, yeah. you know, it, they start from such great places, whether it's New York or from Barcelona or from Venice or from Istanbul or from, you know, Vancouver. They start from some of the world's most fantastic cities. Yes. So it's silly for me to fly all that way yes. and to miss that by jumping straight on the ship. So I always recommend staying. And yes, always ask your travel agent for that yes, advice. I, and it's great because you don't actually have to go to all that faff of doing it yourself and worrying about where do you pick the ship up from and all of that. So your your travel agent will be able to arrange uh, your your flight out to the place with the country wherever couple of days there absolutely um, and it just all is rolled up into the same bill and then you will be either picked up or told how to get from your hotel to the ship and then it's it's yeah. a wonderful week or so back home and sometimes the cruise lines will also arrange that part of the trip for you so sometimes they'll arrange a land tour so that you spend a couple of days exploring the area before starting your cruise so it's also right. worth checking to see if the cruise line does as well right well You've certainly sold me on it. Good. I'd, we can I'd, go together. Oh, oh, <laughs> don't go. Oh, don't tempt me, Andy. <laughs> to be honest with you, I mean, I'm always very honest with my viewers. They know this. I had no idea what a repositioning cruise was. I knew it meant that you went somewhere else, but I wasn't sure how <laughs> or where. And you've made it very, very clear. Good. So basically, it's a great opportunity. It's normally a, a better price and you have a chance to see the place that you're flying out Absolutely. to if you do want to. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Well, listen, thanks very much indeed to Andy here. I think he's been terrific, really painted a wonderful picture of repositioning cruises. They sound like a great deal. Thanks very much indeed to you for watching. I'll see you next time here on the TV Cruise Channel.